Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be making over some Dollar Tree foam pumpkins. And I've already uh, painted these and uh, removed the stem. Uh, so, uh, the reason I painted them is because I'm going to be covering them with fabric and this orange, uh, will show through most of my fabrics. So here I'm just taking my thumb, uh, with the help of some scissors here and there and poking a hole in both the top and the bottom. So it pokes pretty easy because these are hollow pumpkins. Uh, so it's not hard at all to, to make that little hole. And you don't want to make it too big, but about this size is, is perfect. So I'm going to be covering most of these pumpkins with sweater material. And to make it super easy, this is, not, we're not going to be doing any sewing here. It's just going to be hot glue, um, but to make it super easy, we are going to use a, a sleeve. So you want about a 10 inch section maybe for this size pumpkin. This is the, the medium size one that you get from, uh, I guess it's the larger one at the Dollar Tree. But they do have a smaller one and I cover a lot of those because those make really good bowl fillers. Um, and instead of using a sweater on those, you can use uh, socks if you can find them in the right color. So, uh, and if you can't find them in the right color, uh, then you can always um, paint them. I'm going to be painting one of my pumpkins uh, later in this video. So, um, you just stretch that over and you're going to you're going to tuck it in the top and the bottom. Um, now, if you're just keeping this for yourself and you want to make it to where you can remake this later, then you wouldn't have to hot glue. But if you're going to sell it, you definitely need to do that. So I just put a little hot glue uh, on that foam pumpkin right around that hole there. And then I'm just going to tuck that fabric down in there. And it's as simple as that. I do that on both the top and the bottom and then that covers it really well and it holds really well now on this particular one i uh, stuffed a little too much in the top i think i cut it long enough but uh, i used too much of the fabric on the top so now i'm struggling a little bit with this bottom but because this fabric is so stretchy uh, it i can just glue a little bit and tuck it down in and hold it and it's easy to fix my boo-boo on this one so just be careful that you don't uh, use too much on one end and that you cut these long enough so like i said i just stretch it down in there and and glue it and it's as simple as that uh, to make this pumpkin and uh, dollar tree up until a couple years ago, Dollar Tree had bags of uh, wooden stems where they had just cut pieces from um, from twigs, I guess, and it, they, they were perfect for stems, and they kind of came in different sizes and different, with different lengths and different thicknesses, and so I bought several of those, but I'm running low on them, and before I bought those, uh, before I was able to find those, my husband would just kind of uh, cut me pieces from twigs himself. So I really liked that Dollar Tree carried those, and it saved a lot of time. Uh, but I don't know that they're going to get them again, and uh, I guess he's just going to have to cut some more. So all I do to add that is just put a dab of hot glue right in the top there where that top pole is. And then just glue that piece of the stem down in. And it makes a, a very uh, good little pumpkin. So like I said, super, super easy just to um, put some glue on it and stick it down in there. Now at this point, you could uh, add more embellishments to the top. Uh, you could maybe make some leaves or... 
or put some burlap around the top, but I'm just keeping most of mine simple. Uh, I will add some to, to some of them, but for this one, I'm just keeping it very simple. Now, here's another one, and uh, I'm going to cover it with another sweater. Now, I like to stick with certain colors because for me, um, and I, I did mention that I, the upper part of the sleeve is better for these because of the size of these. Now, the smaller pumpkins from Dollar Tree, you can use the part of the sleeve around the wrist. I don't like to leave that cuff on because I just don't like the look of it. But um, but you can use the lower part of the sleeve on the smaller pumpkins. But for this one, you need to make sure you cut a part of the sleeve that's, um, that is wide enough to go around these. But uh, like I said, I like to stick to certain colors. I like this color of orange. I don't like brighter orange or, or deeper orange. It just doesn't seem to sell well for me. This color sells really well. So I like this color of orange. I like uh, lighter teals, and I like creams and whites. Those are the colors for me that sell really well. Now, I used to be able to sell black and white. Uh, I used to be able to sell um, just different shades of pumpkins, different color grays. I sold a lot of gray pumpkins, but now I don't sell any gray ones, and... Um, only a few black and white so i just kind of stopped making those all together and um and just like i said i just like to stick with these colors now i do think that this year now that i made my hole too big in that one i poked it in too far so when i put that stem in it tried to go in too far so to fix that i just glued some spanish moss there to the top and then I glued my stem in, and that filled in enough to keep that stem from trying to go in too far. So, there's a lot of easy fixes with these pumpkins. But anyway, I was saying that uh, I think I'm going to make some lighter green ones this year. I didn't have the fabric today, but I'm going to make some lighter green ones because green is the big color this year. And so, uh, I think a light green would do really well on these. So this is more of a textured um, sweater here, and as you can see, it works really well for, for a pumpkin also. And I think this particular one, I do go back and add a little lace around the top uh, because it, this one's not going to look as realistic anyway, and I just felt like it needed a little something. So like I said, I just go back and add a little lace around the top. Now, you could do that by putting a very small doily on top and then gluing your stem in, or you could take some lace ribbon and kind of gather it around the stem at the top and uh, use that to dress it up. So, like I said, there's just a lot of options with these. And now for this next pumpkin, I'm just taking a large circle that I've cut from a piece of drop cloth. And so you don't have to have just a, um, a sweater sleeve. You could use another part of the sweater and just cut a large uh, circle. Uh, not so large that you have too much fabric to contend with when you stick it down in there. But um, you for this particular do one need here, um, I am, a large uh, enough circle to cover it stretching well and still um, have enough um, to, using a, to, um, to kind of stick in the top there you could use uh drop cloth like i said you could use um part of your sweater you could use um i actually i think maybe maybe on the next pumpkin that i use um maybe uh a um napkin yes i do on this pumpkin here and this is not a dollar tree pumpkin it's the one that i found at an estate sale so it's a lot better quality and i'm struggling more to get the hole in the top and the bottom of this one because it's not completely hollow but i still am able to get a large enough hole that that it will work but on this particular pumpkin i'm using just a, a cloth napkin and all i've done is just kind of cut those corners off and now I'm just kind of tucking all that in in the top of this. And like I said, you don't have to worry with the bottom then. You just, you just kind of stretch it all around and tuck everything in the top. 
So uh, this makes it very easy to find uh, material for this. You could just even use old clothing that uh, that you've torn or stained or uh, just doesn't fit anymore. So you really have a lot of options with these. Now, what I didn't like with this uh, with this napkin is the color. I didn't like this dark of a turquoise. I like lighter shades of turquoise. So I decided here, and this is very doable, is to just take some paint. I'm using chalk paint. You could use any kind of paint. And I don't think I would use oil paint, but you could use any, any water-based paint. And uh, all I'm doing is just kind of adding some, uh, some dimension in the color. And what I'm trying to do is lighten this up a lot. But I also like the dimension that you get. And you're just kind of painting uh, in the same direction as your uh, as your pumpkin sections are going, I wouldn't I wouldn't go sideways with your strokes. I would just kind of go down uh, down the the way the pumpkin is um, the pumpkin slices or sections are going, if that makes sense. So I'm taking a lighter turquoise here, and just any any color that you want to do. Uh, the great thing about pumpkins is they're not a solid color generally. They're they have a lot of dimension in color. So um, I first take some. I think this is called sea glass, and it's the Dixie Belle color that I'm going over this with. Uh, but like I said, any color will work. And then. Um, and then I'm taking some off-white uh, and doing the same thing, trying to lighten it up some more. And then um, after I get that painted on well, then I decide I still want more dimension and color. So I took some light green, and I think this was farmhouse green from Dixie Belle, and I just really watered it down. So it's uh, probably two-thirds water and only about one-third paint and I'm painting this over it. And it doesn't hurt to paint this at all because this is not a stuffed pumpkin. So all you're getting wet is this fabric. You've got the foam on the inside. And um, on hot days like it is in Tennessee today, uh, it isn't a problem at all just to set it outside and let it dry. And I think it only took about 30 minutes to be completely dry. So, um, it was definitely worth painting over this. And, and the great thing about uh, the smaller pumpkins, um, the ones that are smaller than this, in that you can use socks to cover. You can just kind of, I think you can get two, out of most socks, you can get two pumpkins out of it. Uh, but the great thing is, even if you only find the white socks, then uh, you can paint them. So, uh, I've made many pumpkins like that, and they sell really well. Now, for, for this particular one, um, I kind of felt like it looked like a Cinderella pumpkin after I had painted it like that. So, um, I thrifted this very uh, large lace ribbon. I was actually able to find a lot of ribbon at a really good price at a thrift store. So, I'm going to have ribbon for a while. And on this one, I'm just gathering it around the top. It's already somewhat gathered, but it still needed to be gathered quite a bit more. So I'm just gluing it, gluing a little spot and gathering it and holding that in place. And then uh, gluing another little spot and gathering that and just uh, kind of building that top there. And after I do that, because I'm just gluing there at the center, I do add some touches of glue kind of on the outside a little, uh, not laying it down flat, but just keeping it from uh, standing straight up. Uh, but I really like the look that this larger ribbon is creating on this pumpkin because it gives it a really shabby, chic look. And then after I get this um, glued on then I go back and use a more narrow ribbon and kind of layer add another layer to that and I really like how it turned out 
Now, like I said, at this point, you could use a doily. And for this doily, I mean, for this particular one, it wouldn't have to be um, a tiny doily, just just a small doily. Now, you could, you, you could do a white um, napkin here on this pumpkin, and you could just uh, kind of paint different shades of white and maybe some tans and even maybe a little bit of light blue and it would be really pretty it would make a really pretty pumpkin also but i love making pumpkins of all kinds i think that they're uh, they're really quick and i think you can use a lot of imagination on them but i really really like doing the shabby chic ones and like i said i don't do as many of them because uh, for me uh, the regular pumpkins sell better uh, but i really uh, like using uh, or i really like making the shabby chic pumpkins and then when i make them uh, real dressy like this then I use unusual items a lot of times as the stem, and that just adds more to it. And on this particular one, I'm going to be using a doorknob, an old doorknob. And this is a smaller doorknob that's not completely round. And I, I think I've seen these on old linen closet doors before, but I thought this would be the perfect uh, place to use that. Now, if you don't have an old doorknob, it's not a problem at all because you could take a newer doorknob and paint it to look old. So, um, a lot of times people are updating their, and I'm sorry, I don't have that in frame very well. You can see that there's a doorknob there, but it just, I don't have it in frame well at all. Uh, but uh, you could use just a regular doorknob, like I said, and paint it, or you could use a door pull. And a lot of times, especially at Hobby Lobby, their drawer pulls, some of their drawer pulls will look like a, a knob. Uh, so there's just a, a lot of things that you could use as a stem to, to kind of dress it up. And here I'm just kind of making a shabby bow. All that I've done is taken some uh, ribbon and cut strips of ribbon and cut strips of torn fabric and... Uh, just kind of tied it together right in the middle and just kind of let it hang and that's all I did for that uh, particular bow and it really dresses that up but I really like the look of this and here are some of the pumpkins that I worked on today there's one I just covered with lace uh, one that I had last year and covered it with lace and um and just kind of gave these different looks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.